Premium golf equipment at an affordable price. That is what Tacomo Golf are saying about their products. We've got the 301 CB iron to test today. I'm going to take them out onto the golf course, get some numbers with them in the studio, and then give you an insight in what Tacomo are saying about these irons. Playing the last four holes here at Churston, let's see how I get on. Now you may be like me, you may never have heard of Tacomo Golf. Well, they're direct to consumer. They're an online shop that you can go in there, pick your own golf equipment, even go through a custom fitting as long as you know your own specs. And I would always suggest to everybody that you go and get custom fit. It's a real, a really important aspect of any golf, picking out golf equipment. Make sure you get custom fit before you go and choose any golf equipment, which is always the beauty, I suppose, of buying it at a retail shop. However, they are direct to consumer, which when they say things like quality product or premium product at an affordable price, you can understand how and why that is, being as they're cutting out that middleman and going direct to you. and consumer really kicked off in kind of like the 90s when dot com when the websites got out there and people could sell direct to the golfer what do i think about direct to consumer well i look at it with two hats i've got my old retail hat head pro of a golf club i want that customer to come into the shop like i said before i want to see that customer to talk about their game talk about the positives and negatives and see what can help when it comes to ordering a set of golf clubs and then obviously custom fit that person. But there's also the other side of it where I do it. I go direct to book a flight if I'm going on holiday. If I'm gonna go and organize a car hire, I might go direct with that as well. So I've got to look at it with two, two hats really. Ultimately, as golfers, as individuals, as people, we want to get the best price we possibly can, but not lose the quality that we're ordering. First impressions looking down at the four iron. Not a particularly offset iron. Remember, these are designed for players between a low handicapper and maybe even a scratch golfer. So what do players want to look for? They want workability, they want control, but they also want a nice clean line on the top. And when you look down at this club, not a great deal of offset, so that's quite a nice look to my eye. Then when you look at that top rail, maybe, if anything, a little flat on top. What I mean by that is that it's, it's very industrial, should we say, where it gets uh, very sharp edges where you don't see that kind of rolling effect, which is, again, a little bit more pleasant on my eye in particular. That sort of flat top makes it just look a little bit bigger on top. If they probably rolled it just a fraction, they might just take that line off and then maybe just suit the eye just a little bit easier. But all in all, a beautiful looking iron, not seeing the back edge, which is really important as well. All in all, yeah, I love the first look of it. We've actually got quite a bit of forgiveness when it comes to this iron. They'll use words like forged, silky, feel off the face. I mean, these are all things that you kind of hear me say sometimes when I'm talking about my irons, which are a bladed set of irons. I kind of get that buttery feel. That's what they're trying to get from these irons. Again, that's what they expect sort of better players to want to feel. You're also getting lots of perimeter weighting. You've got a CG point being pushed further down in the head of this club. Again, the idea of this is to push the ball up in the air. Pretty standard lofts, around 34 degrees of loft in the seven iron. But when they talk about things like workability, this is something I do chuckle a little bit about when it comes to workability. Yes, you want an iron that can kind of go up and down in the air, be able to manage that as best as you possibly can. But workability from left to right, right to left, ultimately, 
it's face to path. You've got no gear effect on these clubs, so face to path is really, really important. And ultimately, that comes down to me as the golfer. So with that in mind, I'm gonna hit two shots into this hole. I'm gonna hit one where I get it up in the air, maybe draw it in there, and then I'm gonna try and hit a little bit of a low cut. So I'm gonna hit seven iron to get it up in the air drawing, and then when I'm gonna hit it a little bit lower, a little bit of a cut, I'm gonna use my six iron. Let's see how workable these clubs are. So absolutely no problem hitting both the high draw and kind of like the low shot. Got a little bit, didn't get the fade on the low shot with the six iron, but certainly got the high draw with the seven iron and got plenty of yardage to get back to that flag. But I feel that we should play, as I'm level par right now with these irons, we should play worse ball. So let's see which one is uh, looking a little further away. That's the seven iron, landing right by the flag. That's the six iron, little left, bit short-sided. Let's get the wedge out and give you a bit of an insight into how the wedge looks. Now for me, pitching wedge, really important club in the bag. This is where you're gonna to start to really see the blend into those kind of specialist wedges that you use. And we're definitely getting a kind of rounded look when it comes to this wedge, which is exactly what you would expect to see. For me personally, maybe just a little bit big in its profile. They are certainly a short blade length from heel to toe, but I'm seeing quite a lot of real estate down by the ball, which actually is not a bad thing for lots of players out there. Lots of forgiveness, lots of feel of forgiveness when it comes to a bigger area to hit from. And then we look at the eight iron. And again, this is where the real change is from a more square look when it comes from seven iron to let's say four iron. And this is where you're gonna to start to see that little bit of blending. And we're certainly seeing it in this particular iron. I think from my point of view, when it comes to a wedge, I want to see it slightly smaller. The rest of the irons look absolutely stunning, but I'd probably go for maybe a bit more of a specialist wedge when it comes into these particular irons, or maybe even look at their MB version. with a little birdie at the last being one over now with a little drop shot on the last ordering these clubs really straightforward just going online typing in the details of what you want choose the particular heads that you want they've got lots of different uh, options out there on their website I picked these up for 649 US dollars which if you compare that to some of the bigger brands on the market that's certainly a lot cheaper the components that you get are top of the range KBS shaft is kind of looks like the option that you've got there. You've got Lampkin grips and then you can maneuver the lie and length of the club however you've been fitted and I do stress make sure you go for that fitting. But for 649 US dollars I don't think it's a bad price for what is a set of irons wise pretty pretty good from a feel point of view. Pretty impressive when it comes to the looks point of view. But let's finish this off. Let's head into the studio and just have a little look at some of the numbers. I've been getting with these irons. So let's look at the numbers that we're getting from the seven iron, the pitching wedge, and the four iron. Starting off with the seven iron, 116 mile an hour off the club face, launching at about 18.4 on an average. I'm kind of like between 18 and a half and 19 and a half that I'm looking for from a seven iron in a launch point of view. Spinning at 6,398 revs on an average, if I can get it anywhere between six and a half thousand and seven thousand revs with a seven iron, that's pretty much spot on. So bearing in mind these are 34 degrees in loft, 
this is pretty much right where I want it. 158 yards on an average carry, best out there at 161. If we then go into the pitching wedge, 98.6 mile an hour off the club face, launching at 24.8, spin up there at 8,975 on an average, and then an average carry of 123 around 120 to 125 is kind of where I would want to be with a pitching wedge. So I'm again, right where I would want them for my setup. If we then move into the four iron, and this is where I start to get a few miss hits. On average, 126.2, launching at 13.2 with an average spin of 4,300 revs, and then an average carry of 183. Now, if we take out a few of the miss hits that I got here, we got one there at 179, we got one there at, well, I'll leave that one in at 183, and then one at there, a miss hit, low strike at 168, and then the last shot was a bit toey at 178 as well. You can see their ball speed pops up to 128.3 and an average carry of 187. And the real message here is that when you do miss hit these irons, especially when you get into those longer irons, five irons and four irons, you're gonna see a drop off in numbers. You're gonna see a drop off in your yardages, which is to be expected. Well, there you go. There is my review of the Tacomo 301 CB irons. Some fantastic numbers that I'm getting from the studio as to be expected with the design of these clubs and the lofts that they are delivering. Also out on the golf course, some really good feel, some really good control that I'm getting from these irons, but I'd like to hear what you think about that review. Are you a direct to consumer type of golfer? down there in the comments. Don't forget, if you are new to the channel, hit that subscribe button and a big thank you to Tacomo for sending me these irons to test. I'll see you all again very soon.